Hello colleagues, let's discuss today uh, how to build complex systems from the basic one. And the key message is very, very simple. Go step by step. Don't jump immediately to the final configuration. Don't jump over the configuration. Increase the complexity one step at a time. So that's the key message of uh, the whole presentation. But let's uh, bring examples. Uh, you want to build a complex uh, system to cover a warehouse. You want to track many people. The warehouse will have many submaps, and you want to track a few robots, for example, or forklifts. That's great. Eventually, you want inverse architecture, and uh, you want to build this configuration. Uh, but don't try to build it right away. Most likely you'll fail because there are so many ways something you know will go wrong. Uh, we recommend to start from the most simple configuration, which is non-inverse architecture. Remember, you want to build inverse architecture, 3D and multiple submaps. Okay, fine, it will be, but later. Build a basic non-inverse architecture with just two station beacons, one mobile beacon. Uh, PlayStation beacons, like you know, like we really recommend, uh, just two station beacons on the wall. Achieve a perfect tracking for one simple uh, super beacon, for example. If you uh, have perfect tracking, that's it. That's done. Move to the next stage. Since you want to build uh, inverse architecture, your next stage would be inverse architecture, 2D, and uh, one mobile beacon. So effectively. If you deploy the system based on uh, super beacons, you do not change anything except for updating the software from non inverse architecture to inverse architecture. And of course, you need to check. And this is why we do not recommend inverse architecture right from the beginning. Uh, you need to check the, your station beacons actually have two different frequencies. Because remember, for inverse architecture, the station beacons are emitting ultrasound. So in order to receive ultrasound at the same time and being able to distinguish between ultrasound from one station beacons and another station beacons, they must emit from uh, they must emit different ultrasound frequencies. So this is why you take the same physical super beacons. They must be already on two different frequencies, for example, 19 kilohertz and 25 kilohertz. You update the software from non-inverse architecture to inverse architecture. You update the software. Uh, to your mobile beacon to inverse architecture and you update the software to your modem to inverse architecture. As soon as you've done that, and of course, remember to press default button, you will have exactly the same physical configuration, but it will be now inverse architecture. Check the tracking is fine. If you uh, have it, that's great. So you're already on the next stage. What would be the next stage? Uh, well, you have multiple options in this case. Um, I'm bringing only one of the examples. So you may jump immediately to more than one mobile beacon per one submap that you've built. That's one path. So you increase the number of uh, mobile beacons. But we recommend uh, that you go a different way. So instead of, for example, one uh, uh, submap in 2D, you make one submap but in 3D because eventually you need to build 3D submaps. That's great. So once again, remember, you do not change multiple things at the same time. You change only one thing. Inverse architecture is already there. Uh, uh, one uh, mobile beacon, one hedge is still there. What do you change? You change from 2D to 3D. Of course, it immediately brings, instead of two station beacons, uh, four st stationary beacons, and of course, all of them must have uh, different ultrasound frequency. That's what you check. But the change is simple and single from 2D to 3D. Okay, you checked, you achieved the perfect now 3D tracking. That's, that's great. Then again, you have uh, two options. Either you can incre uh, increase the number of mobile beacons in the same 3D uh, submap, or since you eventually need uh, a larger area with multiple 3D submaps, you move uh, to several, in this case, two, because inverse architecture in general and 3D particularly is more complex. So you do not jump to multiple, multiple, multiple submaps, but you build another submap. 
In case of 3D, it means that you already have one, two, three, four station beacons and you build 3D submap. Uh, in order to build another 3D submap, you build another or you add another two station beacons. They also must have a different frequencies from those four. So it means that you have two common. So it means that you have two submaps. One is, for example, 19, uh, 31, 37, 25, and another submap. They will have two overlapping beacons, 19, 25, 45, and 22, for example. So you build those kind of thing. And now you build the service zones because you must build the service zones um, for two or more submaps. With a single submap, you kind of build, you can build without uh, defining the server zones explicitly, but there are always server zones. Even if you don't define them, the radius is 30 meters. So it's uh, the server zones are there. But when you build multiple uh, submaps, you must define those server zones anyway, because otherwise, uh, when the beacon, the mobile beacon, the hatch is in this area, it must be tracked only by this submap. But if their maps are not too large, then it's possible that some map from this area will be able to attempt to track a beacon in this area. And this kind of minority report or minority opinion um, is not great because this is the maybe confused, particularly when you have many submaps and they will be overlapping. So in order to avoid that, uh, you must define the server zones. But that's uh, subject to another video. Uh, please check them about the uh, submaps and how to build submaps. The whole point of this video is increase one step at a time complexity. So from non-inverse architecture and one uh, submap and one beacon, mobile beacon, you move to inverse architecture, the same number of beacons, but from the non-inverse to inverse. Uh, then from, no, uh, from inverse architecture 2D, you moved to 3D. It automatically requires increasing of uh, from two station beacons to four station beacons. And the last step that we just discussed, you increased from uh, one submap of four beacons to two submaps of six beacons, four and four and two uh, uh, overlapping beacons or uh, common beacons for both. So as soon as you build this, then you can increase the complexity step by step, basically by adding third submap, fourth, et cetera, et cetera, as many submaps as you wish. Still, you have only one single uh, mobile beacon, a single hatch. As soon as you build it and you basically cover the whole uh, warehouse, you are ready to introduce, you know, more fish, so more uh, hedges, uh, more mobile beacons in your network. Introduce. Uh, and then it will be basically the end if uh, your task was just uh, many uh, mobile beacons, like many forklifts or many people. But in case you have a task to introduce also robots, then introduce the robots even on the later stage. So, for example, you have many people already running around, that's great. But then introduce the robot because again each step brings some additional uh, load some in, uh, additional uncertainty because you may be mixed mixing up something or confusing something so uh introduce one complexity at a time uh other uh path let's say from uh basic non-inverse architecture to um, more complex non-inverse architecture with several submaps and then uh let's say to eventually multiple submaps multiple mobile beacons uh and multiple stationary still 2d that would be your this path then the same but non-inverse architecture in 3d so it will be the same one less uh one one step less uh, than compared to inverse architecture because non-inverse architecture is simpler. Simpler, let me repeat why. Because for non-inverse architecture, you can install station beacons, for example, uh, super beacons of any frequency, and it will still work. Because remember, super beacons can receive ultrasound frequency uh, on any frequency, but emit only on uh, on the native frequency of, of the super beacon. So it means that you may have whatever random frequencies for non-inverse architecture, it will still work. For inverse architecture, it will not work because you must have a very specific frequency. They must uh, not be at the same frequency in the same submap, etc. So this is why I start with non-inverse non architecture and then only to move to inverse if needed.
So uh, I hope it's clear by now about the steps. One basic step at a time. Don't jump over. Don't jump over to their to the final configuration. Then uh, other recommendations. Uh, why do we recommend super beacons to start with? Because super beacons are the simplest. Uh, let's compare it with other uh, beacons. For example, Mini RX. Super beacon has a hemisphere, so 360 degrees uh, reception diagram um, in uh, reception and transmission. By the way, diagram in uh, horizontal if the beacon is looking upward, and 180 degrees um, uh, vertically. For uh, Mini RX, for example, that's not the case because Mini RX doesn't emit anything. So it means that you cannot build, for example, the map. You must enter uh, the distances. Uh, Super uh, Mini RX has around 120 degrees diagram, not 180 degrees diagram. Uh, Mini RX um, has a smaller antenna. So in case you have larger distances or there is a, a interference, etc., etc., there is a high chance uh, to have a problem due to this. Uh, etc. You see, so Super Beacon is simpler, so start with something uh, simpler so with Super Beacon. Later on, of course, you will replace uh, instead of the Mobile Beacon, uh, Super Beacon, you will use a badge, for example, or a jacket, or a watch, or whatever, which is more demanding in terms of coverage, in terms of everything. But start with something simple, which is Super Beacon. Uh, the same with industrial beacons. So industrial beacons, uh, they don't have embedded battery. So you need to provide the battery. You need to provide the electricity. It's easier to mix up something, you know, confuse something. So this is why we do not recommend to jump immediately uh, to uh, super uh, to industrial super beacons, for example, or industrial RX. Start with super beacons, achieve, and then replace if needed, like in the previous configuration. You you sometimes even achieve the perfect tracking in you know basic uh, uh, multiple sub maps map and multiple hedges or based on super beacons and only after that replace them uh, with uh, industrial beacons for example. Uh, similar uh, we usually recommend when you go to a very uh, complex and demanding site like industrial side for example noise there is noise acoustic noise and you're not sure of course eventually since it's no uh, since it's you know polluted or you know dust or something of course eventually you want to have industrial uh, beacon there uh, industrial super beacon there or um super beacons outdoor that's fine but don't jump there you know don't don't jump in eventually to the you know final configuration because maybe uh it's so noisy that our system will simply not work it's also possible not not very probable but possible and our recommendation is very simple get the super mp starter set test it in the real environment you know put it there and you will clearly see using the embedded oscilloscope whether it works or not if it does then okay 95 percent of issues are resolved and you can be confidently moving uh to let's say real uh, configuration which would include for example industrial super beacons you know quickly deploy the super beacons because they have batteries and later on um, uh, when you have more time and more confidence you deploy already uh, using industrial super beacons because you need to you know bring the power okay my cat came <laughs> uh, uh, the same uh, about the modems Super modems is, of course, a great. Okay, no way, uh, animal. <laughs> um, super modems are great, uh, but super modems are more complex to implement. So logic is very, very, very the same. If you want to deploy a very large configuration, uh, even basic, not not basic, but uh, modern version 5.9, uh, 5.1 is good enough. Uh, but of course, super modem brings Wi-Fi connectivity, brings uh, UDP over Wi-Fi. Uh, it brings significantly more capacity. That's great. But it comes also with the complexity. Special connector, special power supply. You cannot uh, uh, just 
connect okay the, the latest modems uh super modems you can connect already usb and use it but for example the previous version of super modems you need the external power supply for sure then this wi-fi don't, don't mess with with uh, those small settings now later on at the final stage when everything is uh, tracking of course use the super mod and uh of course the uh, this is just a small highlight because there are more steps like you know uploading the software pressing the default buttons or uh, i'm not touching them in this video because it's well described in some of the previous videos like avoid typical mistakes and of course the operating manual operating manual is your uh, key uh, guide for the step by step this video was focusing on the one single thing don't jump immediately to the final configuration. Start with the basic configuration, which is non inverse architecture, two station beacons, one mobile beacon. Achieve perfect tracking and then increase complexity uh, one step at a time. Thank you very much.